Okay, so one thing we haven't looked at yet is the pains that are related to objects and how they, they uh, contribute to the workflow when using objects. So let's take a look at those now. These are some very special tools that are very powerful. One thing we've been working with a bit is the gallery. But one thing we haven't looked at, and I'm going to pin the gallery open here, by uh, I initiated it by hovering over the gallery tab. When it popped open, I'm going to pin it open by clicking in the upper right on this little tack icon. And uh, as you'll notice, when we click on something here, we get a live preview over here in the resource preview pane. So that's why we made that part of our default workspace. So you can actually use your arrow keys or click through with your mouse to actually go through and audition content. So that's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, the gallery pane, obviously, it has a variety of options here at the top where you can go back and forth, and it's a, a very great way to get through your content gallery and quickly get its stuff. So there's a built-in content gallery with Autoplay Media Studio, but you can also add your own stuff to this uh, content area. Okay, so if we click on, for example, the images icon, you'll see it gives us a variety of images. So we could, for example, go into the abstracts area, and we get a bunch of abstract backgrounds. If we select one, uh, it activates it and we can scroll through them and see previews over here. This is a great way to select stuff. Um, for example, if we if we go into uh let's see, let's go let's stay in the images, but let's go over to photos. As you can see you can navigate up and down uh by clicking on these little folder icons as well. We'll go into the photos one and again we'll click and then scroll through and you can see over here we've got this nice little preview happening and we can we can go ahead and select the one we want open it, move it, do whatever we want with it. Uh, in that case, I, I pressed enter and it opened it in my default viewer because this is like a file explorer. But if I wanted to, I could just drag it here onto the stage and in this case we'll say yes as a background and create a background out of it, for example. So these are two very powerful panes for working with objects, the gallery pane and the preview pane. So let's go ahead now and I'm going to remove that. I'm going to unpin this gallery pane, unpin it, sorry, and we're going to go ahead and hover over the objects pane. And when it pops open, we're going to pin it. Now let's go ahead and put some objects on our page. So we'll select a button by clicking on the button icon, browse for file, and then checking uh, one of these and pressing OK. So we'll take the orange parallel button again for consistency. We'll press OK. Then I'm going to quickly duplicate it, select them all, distribute them from the toolbar here and center them from the toolbar to create a quick little button bar. Now we will add some label objects also so that we have more than one type of object. So click on this little A icon and then press OK. I'm just going to drag it over here and again I'm going to duplicate it a few times, select them and distribute and align them just so it's a consistent visual thing here for our demonstration. Okay, so we've got a couple different kinds of objects and the reason I did that is because I want to demonstrate this pull down menu in the objects pane that allows you to view just one type of object at a time or all objects. So for example here you can see all our label objects and all our button objects present in the objects pane here. Buttons 1 through 5, labels 1 through 5. And if we wanted to, for example, uh, let's say we had a really complex project and we just wanted to see the buttons. We could go ahead and click on this and drag down to button objects and it will only display the button objects in the objects pane. We could do the same for the labels. And in this particular case, we would only see the label objects. Okay? Uh, you can actually manipulate objects right here directly in the object pane. So for example, arrangement. So if I go ahead and I, I drag this uh, so that you can see the arrangement. So you can see it's button 1 is behind button 2. I can actually drag it here in this pane and drag it on top. I can drag it all the way up here, I can drag it down here, etc. So that's very powerful. So if you wanted to change uh, aspects of certain things here or multi-select, for example, you can click and drag to multi-select these objects or you can control click to multi-select a variety of objects and you can also control from here the group and pin functions. So for example, by toggling this little icon here you can actually pin objects, and you can see a little pin with a note appears, so it's a nice visual indicator. And you can lock them by double-clicking on this lock icon, and you can see it, it locks and unlocks itself. And uh, those pertain to the group lock, or sorry, to the lock and pin functions that we touched on in an earlier lesson in this chapter. And additionally here we've got a visibility icon, so that's kind of handy where we can go ahead and click 
to not show certain objects. So it's really handy when we're laying out to be able to show and, and unshow certain objects as we go along. So for example, if we wanted to unshow just our label objects, we could go ahead and click here to get our label objects, and then we could just go ahead and unshow them. And then if we wanted to show just our button objects, we could do that. So that's a very handy function that you can use over here to quickly manipulate objects and do a variety of things with them. I use the objects panel all the time, especially for selecting. For example, if I wanted to select my buttons, uh, most often, rather than clicking and dragging over them all here, which often, you know, when you start to get things intertwined in a complex project, it's just not convenient. Often I'll go ahead and select them in here. And it's very handy. Additionally, you'll notice that you can right-click on them and you get the same set of options as you would expect to get um, with the addition now of grouping and ungrouping them. So, for example, if I wanted to group my buttons, I can do that all from the Objects pane simply by dragging over them and right-clicking and selecting Group. Now I have a group. And additionally, I could right-click and select Lock, Selection, and it would lock that group for me. So that's a pretty handy... Uh, I'm going to go to Object Unlock All. That's a pretty handy tool, this object pane, and you can use it to uh, do a variety of things. I'm going to control shift g to unlock them here. Okay, now let's take a look at the Properties pane. I'm going to get rid of my Objects pane here, just by unpinning it. And uh, it's going to auto-retract. Of course, when you pin and unpin these uh, pallets, or panes, sorry, not pallets, panes, they get tabbed here on the side, and you can go ahead and retrieve them by hovering over them. Okay, so let's move on to the Properties pane. If we select an object here, and actually I'm going to go ahead and get rid of uh, all but two of these objects, <coughs> and I'll move them down. If we select an object and then we take a look in our Properties pane, we'll see that there's a variety of options active for that object. So for example, we can edit a variety of features for an object directly here in the Properties pane. I'll change the text, for example, by going to the text line here and typing in Hello World and you can see it changes in real time and we can audition it in real time. Additionally here I can go and go ahead and change the size of my text or the style and the font and we have options for our text alignment, offsets and so forth. Most of the things that you would expect and basically the same things you get when you double click and looking here in the settings and attributes tab. So if you for example wanted to initiate the actions for the on click area you could go to the properties pane and click on this little ellipse and ellipsis and it would bring up this dialog and you could go ahead and edit your actions and then press OK. Additionally if you wanted to change your size, your position, whether it's visible or enabled, the tooltip text and so forth. You can go ahead and do that right here in the properties pane. So as you can see that's extremely powerful. Um, for complex projects where you get a lot of stuff laid out it's really handy to have this pane here or you can even detach it and move it somewhere into your project area like this where you can actually just go through click on the object perhaps you know if you want to edit the text on five or six buttons in a scenario like this and I'll just do this behind here I'll select these all align them and distribute them it'd be much quicker to do it here than to go into the dialog uh, properties dialog by double clicking. So we can go ahead and just select each one. We could uh, quickly type in whatever text that we want to type in here. For example, button 1, button 2, button 3, and so forth. And as you see, I'm doing it very quickly, and this is not something that you would be able to do as fast if you were initiating the entire dialog box. So the properties pane is very, very handy. And uh, the last thing that we're going to look at, and I'm just going to redock it over here, the last thing I'm going to look at is the difference between objects in the property pane. So the property pane is actually context uh, relevant. So for example, if I select a button, it has properties that are unique to the button object. If I select the label object, you see suddenly we get a variety of different um, options such as orientation. You don't have the orientation option for a button object. So the properties pane is going to be relevant for whatever button that, or sorry, whatever object you have selected at that particular time. And as well, you can actually use it to edit multiple objects. So if I select all my buttons by dragging over them, and I want to change all these font colors at once, I don't actually have to go through and do it one at a time. I can go ahead here and collect the up uh, tile, select my new font color. Let's say, for example, we choose blue. 
and it edits all the objects at once so it's extremely handy so the paints provide an opportunity for you to do some really advanced manipulation of your objects and it's a great thing to look at and I encourage everybody to explore these paints um, in their own workflow so let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson